Blessings and peace to you. This is SB Favor Thinking Podcast, and my name is SB Favor. How are you doing? It is Sunday, December 19th, 2021. Another wonderful day, and another day to be thankful. And as I always say, if you focus on what is good, then you can project something good to happen. So make sure you focus on all that is good. You can do no wrong by focusing on what is good. If you are out there traveling about, make sure you're wearing your mask and using your hand sanitizer. I just want to remind you that we are still in the middle of a pandemic. And by all means, keep yourself safe. Use that hand sanitizer and wear your mask. If you're using public bathrooms or just traveling, please keep yourself safe and keep your family members safe. I'd like to also remind you, if you would like to give to the podcast, you can give at Cash App, dollar sign, SB Favor. I thank you so much for your donations. Um, Jackie Draper is here and we are going to talk about examining and confessing your faults to keep a healthy relationship. Many of us have different types of relationships, our children, our parents, our neighbors, strangers, marriages. We have all kinds of relationships and sometimes people do not confess their faults. Trying to resolve issues and, and, and the clashes that we sometimes have with one another. The best thing to do is to confess your faults. Because when you confess your faults, then you're willing to change and to acknowledge the thing that is wrong for change to come. So, examining and confessing your faults, to me, is, is, is an act of humility in a relationship as well. When you confess your faults, because you are examining yourself. To do better. So, how you doing, Jackie? Wonderful. How are you? I am moving right along. It is Sunday, you know, and Sundays. Um, I normally don't do an episode on Sundays. We never do an episode on Sundays, but today is Sunday. I'm pumped up because I prayed this morning and spent a little time with God, and I'm just pumped up. So, how are you? How are you? Great, beautiful day. Fantastic. Yes. Yeah. So, what what do you think about that, Jackie? You do you think that relationships can be better if we examine ourselves first before we point the finger at others? I absolutely believe that you need to examine yourself. Mm-hmm. You absolutely need to uh, take your own pulse, take your own inventory. Yeah. Examine your own demons or what have you your faults your flaws Mm -hmm. and you need to either you need to recognize them obviously but you need to know is this something that I want to accept about myself or is this something that I want to change for the better good of my relationships with others whether lovers or friends or your own family members your children a lot of times you know people their personality traits get in the way of them uh, their relationship with their children also yeah, with children, I believe that parents should grow with their children. Because when you become a parent for the first time, um, there's so much to learn. And each child is different. So we should grow with our children. And we should examine ourselves with our children so we can know what each child needs. Because every child needs something different. And um, right. with siblings, we should examine ourselves so that we can adapt and understand the next person because if you want somebody to be like you come on now that's kind of crazy none of us are alike so we have to adapt and we have to make adjustments to keep the harmony as far as marriages i believe that you know and and friendships i think that people should examine themselves to grow because every relationship has to grow every relationship has to grow no relationships should stay at one level for five or 10, 15 years. If a person, you meet somebody and they doing the same thing for, for 10 or 15 years, there's something wrong. There's something wrong now. Come on, come on. So, um, that's just, that's just my view on it. You know, um, personally, I try to examine myself every single day when I wake up and I do that as you said, Jackie, taking inventory. And I like that word inventory. I take inventory of myself because, I work on myself daily to do better. So that's what I do to examine myself. How about you, Jackie? Oh, absolutely. I try to be conscious of uh, my behavior, and I hope to be a person who is 
continually evolving. Mm -hmm. I don't want to ever stop growing and ever stop learning. And, uh, and I want to be around people Mm -hmm. who want to evolve as well. Exactly. I don't want to be, I don't want to spend my quality time with people who say, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm a jerk and this is, you know, take it or leave it because I'm going to leave it. (laughs) <laughs> I to find somebody that that wants to to be a good person and wants to grow and and figure things out. Of course, we do have personality traits that will never change mm-hmm. um, that we need to embrace. And if we love someone and we care about them and we want them in our lives, we need to embrace those faults as well. Right. So it's the ever evolving relationships. We have to accept things of other people. Right. And hope, and in hopes that they accept our faults as well, the things that we aren't willing to change. Yeah, I, I believe that we should be willing to change those things that are offensive, those things that are that can be completely flagrant, those things that are harmful to people emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. That's what I believe. I think that yes, there are some things we will always carry within ourselves when it comes to certain faults because we will never be perfect as long as we are on this earth but those things that are not loving those things that are offensive those things that are not caring those things that can be potentially harmful to someone spiritually mentally spiritually and mentally I just believe yes we should change those things we should be aware to change those things so that we can help the next person because when we work on ourselves and we examine ourselves in a relationship, any kind of relationship, then we can um, have the space to know what we need to do within that space. We, we will appropriate what is necessary in that relationship. I think a lot of times people, um, they're not willing to confess their faults or examine themselves because they're not humble. What do you think of that, Jackie? Well, I think that 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 certainly could be the case. Absolutely, of not being humble. Mm-hmm. However, I don't think it's necessary to um, to walk into a room and announce your faults. I think that when you're in a relationship with someone, your faults will really reveal themselves. You don't need to stand there and say, "Okay, I ha- I'm." terrible at this of course that, not. Or the other because it's just too it's too much you no, know? of course I not don't think that, no. I don't, and i don't mean it in the literal sense where you're walking into the room i right, mean right into a relationship with right. someone like you know you you meet a new person you click with them you mm-hmm. like a new woman like you and i became friends mm-hmm. you know if we just became friends and we started talking about the crappy things about ourselves Mm -hmm. we would be like oh my god this woman's crazy i don't want to be her friend (laughs) right right (laughs) you know but we would you you know they your faults eventually reveal themselves i don't i think if you're in a long-term relationship Mm -hmm. and okay for instance um i have a boyfriend Mm -hmm. we have a discussion about something and he's told me i don't like how you respond to this exactly and I was like, okay. And then literally yesterday, he brings it up. I responded completely differently. Mm-hmm. And he said, he didn't say anything. <laughs> he sat there for a minute. And I was like, um, okay. <laughs> In my head, I'm like, oh. And then he said, uh, I wasn't expecting that response. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, I chose to not respond the mm-hmm. way I. I have been right. You know, I, I know that it's not, it's causing a problem when I respond this way. So Mm -hmm. let me try it this way. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to be that person. Right. That's causing problems unnecessarily. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's just, so I'm aware he brought it up Mm -hmm. how I'm behaving. Right. I'm like, okay, I'm checking myself. Mm -hmm. And so next time it happens, I, I didn't do it. I'm aware of it. Right. Exactly. And, and that, we need to do that in our relationships with people if we if we want to continue having relationships with people. Exactly. And that's what I'm talking about. We should examine and confess our faults to keep healthy relationships in that order because when something is done or said and is discussed, as you just stated, Jackie, 
That's exactly what I'm talking about. And like you said, no, we're not talking about walking in the room saying, hey, this is my problem. We'll meet somebody and say, hey, this is what's going on with me. No, we're not talking about that. We're talking about when you do inventory of yourself daily or in a relationship, in the midst of a discussion, you're talking to your friend, your family, your partner, your wife, your husband or whoever, and you come across something that that could be offensive, something that's not loving, something that's not caring. You can say, hey, you know, this is what you're doing. Like Jackie just said, you know, you said, you know, your boyfriend said, this is what's going on. This is what I don't like. And you were willing to change that. And so that's what I'm saying. We have to examine what's going on to keep the relationship healthy. You know, when somebody brings something to your attention, it's good to examine it and come to a place within yourself and the other person sometimes to just confess it. Say, hey, you know, hey, this is what's going on. This is this. Just agree and, and be honest with yourself because when you're honest with yourself, then you can be honest with others. And I say this, it is an attitude of humility because it takes a humble person to really look at themselves and say, hey, this is this is what's going on with me. I have this fault. I have this issue. And having faults and issues that you come across, you don't have to feel bad about it. All of us have faults, all of us. But the key issue that we should work to resolve is understanding that you can work through it and you can have healthy relationships if you're willing to work through your faults and ex by examining yourself. Some people don't do that, Jackie. And that's why I say it's an attitude of humility because I have experienced um, relationships in the past where, you know, people have said to me, oh, I'm not the blame. You're the blame. Blame shifting everything to the other person. Uh, the individual never looks at their self. They never uh, see their wrong. They have a, a attitude of narcissism where they just constantly point the finger at, at others. They could do wrong to 10 people and never see it. And the 10 people could say, hey, you did this to me. And they still won't see what wrong they have done. So that's why I said it is a attitude of humility because um it's it's humbling to say you know what i dropped the ball right here and i need to i need to get this right you know um on a personal note um I, when i look at myself in my relationship the different relationships that i have i examine myself to do better because i know that i can say something i can say the wrong thing i know i can and if i say the wrong thing after I said, I, I asked myself, was that the right thing to say? Or did I say that the wrong way? Then I go back and I apologize to the person. I apologize. It, you know, it could be um, a discussion that I was having with my daughter. And I'll go back and I'll say, you know what? I said that the wrong way. You know, I was a little, uh, you know, anxious at the moment. And I think my tone was not good. So I apologize for saying that the wrong way. So it's things like that. It's something so small, but it's something so important. Because that's what can keep healthy relationships. So, but some people just don't, they never get to a place, Jackie, where they actually examine themselves. You know, what do you think about that? Where, you know, have you ever been around somebody where they just never, ever examine themselves at all? I mean, I, I'm just be honest. I know a couple people like that where they I was just married to one. <laughs> They just never examine themselves. They just, you know, I, I have somebody like that in my family. Like, they just blame everything on everybody. Just, I mean, like, there's no wrong. They're just like the king and the queen. No wrong. They are, well, they're Jesus. They're Jesus. <laughs> I think, in my opinion, what's even worse than people who don't notice their own flaws mm. or people who do notice their own flaws and say, well, too bad for you. This is who I am. Take oh it or leave God. it. That's that you have no desire to evolve and grow and change. Uh, I mean, to me, that's the worst. Well, hurt people hurt others. There's a quote we all know hurt people hurt others. And when somebody says something like that, Jackie, I believe that that person is walking around with a pile of darkness inside of them because hurt people hurt others if a person is walking around and they're so stoic to the point where nothing moves them nothing bothers them and they have no type of empathy compassion they don't feel nothing at all for the next person something's wrong with that 
Something right. is wrong with that. I, I truly believe that. I mean, um, somebody out there might be saying, well, that's just your opinion. Well, guess what? We were all created, okay, with a heart and a mind and a conscience. And we all want to be loved. We all want to be treated well. We all want the same thing. And so that being said, we all have emotions and we all feel. That's how we were wired. And if if a person is walking around with no heart and no feelings, something is wrong. And I, I, I say that they're walking around with a level of darkness inside of them because in order to be that way, to operate contrary to how you were wired, to me, that's darkness. You know, I always refer to God, you know, um, and I always talk about staying in the light because when you stay in the light, you have a conscience about the things you do, the things you say when you stay in the light. And when I say stay in the light, I'm talking about having a relationship with God, having a prayer life and just being uh, aware of self and what you're presenting to others every single day. So that's what I mean by staying in the light. But to keep relationships healthy, you know, Jackie, um, keeping the peace and in, in, in having a place of agreement, would you say that that's the main reason to confess and examine our faults to keep the peace? Right. What you say? Absolutely. Absolutely. We need to keep the peace. We need to choose our battles. Mm-hmm. You know, some things aren't worth the trouble and you know, some things are. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then the person that you're with, um, your partner, your wife, your husband, you know, and that type of relationship. You, when you really care about somebody, you want to check and see where you're going wrong. You want to see where you can make the relationship better. And by examining ourselves first, it's the key to it because you get to see what needs to be appropriated in the relationship. Relationships with family members, when we confess our faults, you know, within ourselves and examine ourselves, we get to see um, what our siblings need and what our children need and what our cousins and extended family members need. Because everybody we come in contact with in relationship, there is an exchange that's going to take place. And if you're going around spitting out venom and poison to people, that's not good, right? So we need to examine ourselves and and see what the relationship needs you know some people are just nasty jackie i mean nasty like i mean just mean spirited and they just they think that's cute they think it's okay to just be really really nasty and mean what do you think about that when you they don't see no wrong with just being mean <laughs> Yeah, there absolutely there's people like that mm-hmm. uh, oh, I don't associate with them for very long no no I th- mm-hmm. and I would imagine that most people uh if you got into a relationship with somebody that acted that way and that's their natural nature, mm-hmm. then you've known it all along and you've accepted it all along. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of times in relationships, especially if you're going to be with someone for a long time or you're best friends with someone for a long time, mm-hmm. they're going to have a uh, behavior that's out of character, mm-hmm. new. Mm-hmm. They're suddenly acting, acting out, you know, being grumpy, mean, what have you, uh, withdrawn. Right. You need to recognize it, that it's a changed behavior. It's not typical for them. Mm-hmm. And, you know, maybe call them out on it. Right. And they're not recognizing that they're doing it. Maybe there's something going on at work or with their relationship with someone else or mm-hmm. so forth. And just as we need to be conscious of ourselves, we need to be conscious of the people that we love and yes. and help them get through whatever they need to give give them what they need, if they need space or if they need um whatever mm-hmm. understanding or yeah that's what excellent. have you that's to excellent get point. through what they're going through also yeah because we would want that in return because we all go through ups and downs there's an ebb and flow to everything in life and if you're going to spend time with people for long periods then you're going to see many sides of them that's true and uh true. you have to be able to accept the good and the bad and mm-hmm. and be able to ride through things that are more difficult than Absolutely. others Absolutely. You know, that's a that's someone that loves the next person when you are 
uh, in a position, seeing somebody's faults, and you decide to cover them. You cover them, meaning you, you look past it. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible that says love covers a multitude of sin. Love, love covers. Love doesn't expose people. It covers them. And when you see somebody's faults and you decide in that moment, it's not important. It's not worth addressing on that level to be upset with them. Then you cover them. And like you said, Jackie, you can at another time or when the time is appropriate, you can, you know, bring it out to the person, you know, t discuss it you know, talking to them the right way about it. You can do that as well. You know, um, I have friends in my life where um, if they act crazy, it's okay. They can act crazy. <laughs> I extend, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, it's okay. You right. know, because I might, like you Absolutely. said, I might have an off day too, right? But what happens is when they act crazy, um, I pray for them and I extend grace to them. And when I extend grace to somebody, it does not mean I'm going to let you just walk over me, hurt me, mistreat me and abuse me. Now, it doesn't mean that. It means I will extend grace to you to give you an opportunity to get it right. And that's what that means. And I would expect for someone to do the same for me. Because like you said, Jackie, we all can have what you call an off day when we are not 100%. We might be 65% on one day. And um, when you find that someone in your life is not 100%, then cover them, help them, show them compassion that they need in that day, extend grace to them in that moment. And when they realize that you have extended that grace and that you have covered them, they will look at you like, wow, that's really my friend. That person really cares about me. And so that gives the relationship the power to grow. That gives the relationship the power to be fortified. I believe that um, in marriages and long-term relationships, I believe that when you see the faults of a loved one and you cover them like that, the relationship uh, can become fortified when two people do that for each other. You see the faults of someone, they see your faults as well, and they look at it like it's not a big deal. I love them anyway, and they cover you and you cover them. Guess what? The relationship will be fortified. And um, it's a blessing and it's very, um, it's just a good thing all the way around to experience that because I've experienced that as well, Jackie, um, having a relationship with somebody covered my faults all the time and I covered theirs and um, we prospered in our relationship. You know, me and my siblings, I have uh, 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 brothers and sisters and we all work uh, on or on our relationships to be better. They're not perfect relationships, but we work on our relationships to be better. And one of the things that my mom taught us was that um, stick together, stick together. By all means, you stick together. And she used to always tell us, be careful how you treat people. And so that stayed with us. And so um, when you cover somebody's faults and they cover yours in a relationship, the relationship will, it will grow and a relationship will be fortified. So we can't forget that. But, um, what do you think about um, someone, Jackie, that um, justifies their faults? They just constantly, <laughs> they constantly justify it. They, they, they blame others or they say, well, I'm like this because I went through this in my past. What do you think about that? They justify it. What do you think about that? Well, that's a person who has no interest in growing and evolving mm -hmm. and healing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from whatever it is that they're blaming. Right. They have no desire to heal from that right that caused this i right. feel that if you are old enough and conscious enough of this behavior that you can recognize what caused it then you are conscious enough to change it yes i agree it's a self-awareness my daughter always say that she said mom you know People just need to be self-aware. She said that one day in a conversation with me. And I said, wow, that's interesting. You're absolutely right. Being self-aware. And when I think about just being self-aware, it just simply means to just be aware of what you're saying, what you as an individual are doing daily. Now, I'm not talking about walking around being like a robot, but just being aware of yourself to the point where... You can acknowledge your own fault. You can acknowledge where you are, what's going on with you versus, oh, well, they did this to me. They said that to me. 
I don't like the way they treat me. I don't like this. I don't like that. You know, and if we are aware of ourselves, that's another way to grow. You Because you get to really see where you are, who you are, and what you need to do to grow. What's the, you know, what's the pros and cons of it all? You get to see all of that. You know, that's the beauty. Well, of, go ahead. Well, like you were saying that someone saying, mm -hmm. you know, oh, I don't like when they do this or I don't, I, I don't like when they do that or what have you. Mm -hmm. um, communication is important. Mm -hmm. You I need to be able to, if you need something, mm -hmm. if there's something that you know that you need, you need to be able to ask for it. Like, I need this from you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This specific, I, you know, yes. I, I, if this is a behavior that that is important to you mm -hmm. and you need it to thrive mm -hmm. or feel safe or to feel secure or whatever the case may be. Right. Yes. You need to be able to ask for it. Yes, I agree. To ask for it. And hopefully you choose a partner that is willing to give you the things that you need mm -hmm. and you willing to give them the things that they need. Yes, Absolutely. It's all about keeping the peace and the harmony in a relationship. It's a beautiful thing when you have a relationship that's filled with harmony. You know, it's beautiful. It's so blissful. And when you do have a disagreement, you kind of like, you kind of hit it and quit it and just, you know, go right back to being blissful. I know what that's like. It's such a beautiful thing because you wake up in the morning and the, you hear the birds singing when the birds not singing at all. <laughs> You know, <laughs> well, you can't make someone else happy. You can't be responsible for someone right. else's happiness. That's right. But you can make sure that they know that they are valued, that they're mm -hmm. important, mm -hmm. that they are loved and supported, and that you are there and you got their back and you, you know, you got it. Everything. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Everything is is on point when you know somebody has your back and you can ask for something and they reciprocate the thing you're requesting they they respond to you you know it's a beautiful thing i think that um healthy relationships it helps us to just prosper as individuals but like you said jackie nobody can make us happy as individuals we have to do the work on ourselves to be happy and then the happiness that we fill ourselves up with we can give it to somebody else nobody can make us happy we are responsible for our own happiness when we get up in the morning you wake up as an individual. I don't care if you got somebody laying next to you, you next to you. You still wake up as an individual. Okay? You don't wake up with somebody else's eyes on you and somebody your eyes on somebody else. You wake up as an individual. And so we are responsible for our own happiness and when you fill yourself up with happiness, and joy and all those things that are good, then you can give it to somebody else because we are uh supposed to be full of life to give life to somebody else that's what life is about we're not supposed to be um taking the life out of somebody else and like leeches you know our, our faults and problems and we're just leeching on to somebody and we're just sucking the life out of them we're not supposed to be doing that we're supposed to be giving life to the next person anybody we come in contact with we're supposed to be giving some type of life to them whether it be our words uh, kind gestures or just our actions overall that's what we're supposed to do day by day you know when you do that you feel good about your own life so jackie you all ready for the holidays ah uh, define ready <laughs> <laughs> yeah right yeah right <laughs> it comes and goes i'm ready for them <laughs> yeah no but i i don't have um I don't have all of my tasks completed. Oh, well, I'm halfway there. I'm halfway but, there. But, uh, you know. Yeah, I'm halfway there. Emotionally, I'm ready for them, but, uh. Yeah. I don't have all my tasks completed. Well, just pace yourself, you know, no stress. Yeah. And just do what you gotta do, you know. But, um, this time of the year is beautiful because we, we get to enjoy family and friends. And it's such a, a beautiful time of giving, you know. And um, listeners, I want to remind you, make sure that you um, do something for the homeless or someone that has uh, more needs than you. We cannot forget uh, 
to do that because sometimes we're giving to each other. We're filled with all kinds of stuff. We got everything we want. We're all just spoiled brats. But there's somebody out there that um, that needs something that you don't have. So make sure you um, keep that in mind during this holiday season. And um, by all means, do the work on yourself. And um, don't blame shift. Keep a attitude of humility. And keep the peace in your relationships. Because when you keep the peace within yourself, you can give that peace to somebody else. Because remember, hurt people hurt other people. And healthy people make other people healthy mentally and spiritually. So, Jackie, is there anything else you want to share? No, I think we did good. (laughs) Well, it is Sunday. And... um, I have more work ahead of me in this day, even though it's a Sunday, because sometimes I take off during the week, but um, I'm going to get some things done today. And uh, listeners, make sure you share the podcast with others. Constantly share the podcast with others. It's so important that you do that. I'm tripping over my words again, and that's okay. (laughs) Um, If you need to reach me, you can reach me at sbfavor at yahoo.com via email. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at SB Favor. I also have a TikTok handle. You can find inspirational content there. And make sure you subscribe and leave me some feedback on my YouTube channel. Um, and when you subscribe to the channel, click the bell so that you can receive a notification each time there is a new episode of SB Favor Thinking Podcast. Listeners, I appreciate you so much. Um, this year, 2021 has been such a great blessing doing this podcast. And so I just want to let all of you listeners know that I greatly, greatly appreciate you. This podcast has done so well over the last couple of months and I'm just, I'm thankful for, and I just expect more great things to come. And once again, I want to remind you, if you would like to give to the podcast, you can give at cash app dollar sign at SB favor. Well, dollar sign SB favor, not at dollar sign SB favor. We got to get that right. Right, Jackie? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So um, I appreciate all your donations. I appreciate it greatly. And so um, enjoy your week. I'll be talking to you soon. And um, have a good day. Thank you so much for listening.